here's the coloring section. Um, I'm using Copic sketch markers mostly, and then I'll use a regular Copic marker. Uh, right here, I'm kind of laying down the flat color for the red part of the armor, and you can see I'm um, kind of outlining where I want the highlights to be, just to block those shapes out so that I won't color them in on accident. Then I'm going in and just filling in the spots. I did a lot of Google searches and uh, searches on DeviantArt for Iron Man to see exactly how to color this guy. Um, I don't know, some people might think looking up reference is cheating somehow, but I don't think it is. I, I think you need to figure out how to draw something before you draw it. Um, unless you're some type of machine and you have all this stuff memorized in your head, it's like you know, I don't know how to draw draw a squirrel. I'd never draw a squirrel, so if I was going to draw a squirrel, I'd have to look it up. You can see, too, when I start coloring this in, I'm going to leave it open above his hand right there. I'm just going to color in the backs of his fingers, but I still leave a lot of it open. Um, just because that's where the uh, energy ball is going to go. That's the tricky part of... Uh, coloring with markers is all the thinking ahead you have to do on where things are going to go and you need to know beforehand what it's going to look like. So it's kind of fun in that sense. You have to have a plan. Um, when you're coloring digitally, you can just do whatever you want, erase, and color over stuff. So it's kind of fun to experiment with, but doing these marker pieces are also a lot of fun because it's it's a little bit more challenging in a way. I'm still relatively new using these markers. I've only done um, maybe 20 pieces using them and I only have like maybe 20 or 30 markers. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to color this piece without making a trip to the art store to get the right color yellow or orange for a his armor, um, but I had a yellow and a uh, orange color that I ended up using and I thought it looked close enough so I didn't have to waste the gas to uh, make a trip to the art store. So you see around his hand and also on his chest I didn't even color that part in because it's going to come later. Oh, it's actually it's going to come right now. See, I'm not even doing like solid colors. I'm more coloring with circles, and that's just to give it that that energy pulsating look using the uh, Kirby dots, I think people call them, from Jack Kirby. Um, there's a darker blue, just to add a little bit of interest to the light blue I was using. I also uh, do like test sketches, like I'll just sketch something out really quick and put the colors down to see exactly how I want to uh, to color it or how it should be colored and to put colors next to each other. So now we have the energy and the flat base middle color for the armor and here I'm actually using a purple marker um, to do the shadows for the armor. I was going to use a darker red for the shadows um, but doing all my reference shots I saw some stuff uh, where people were coloring the armor from red to purple um, just going from that hot to that cool color for the shadow um, and actually you should always kind of use a cooler color for the for the shadows and stuff and um, seeing those pictures reminded me of that so I'm using a purple on the armor um, and I also left some of those edges white I don't know if you can see it in this video, but they're white so that because I knew I was going to be using that purple to color in some of the shadows. So I wanted the purple to be a little bit brighter right on the edge. And then when it goes into the uh, into the red part, it gets darker. Um, and it ended up looking really good. 
I thought, because it gave it um, a lot more depth. Um, and here I'm using a orange marker to do the shadows for the yellow. Um, and instead of using a darker yellow, I'm using an orange to, to do the shadows. Doing colors are tricky because what seems obvious isn't right. It's not like you know you do a light yellow for the for the armor and then get a darker yellow for the shadows. It's really it's going from a yellow into into a cooler or a warmer color. So it's not really just a darker yellow. It's you go into a, an orange or into a red or from a red into a purple. Uh, and here I'm doing the background. So first I outline. Iron Man, so that I don't accidentally color over the wrong spot. And I'm using like a dark blue, I think it's a blue-green actually, um, just because of the, the red and blue are good contrasting colors. So I figured that would make him pop off of the background. Um, so once I have him outlined, I just go and fill in the rest of it, like you can see. Um, I put some more around. I want it to be kind of soft around the energy field, so I put some dots of that there to kind of make it look like it's falling out. And here I'm using a uh, a gray marker, um, very sketchily for the rafters and stuff in the background, just to give it um, to make it come forward a little bit, and just draw some random lines in the back to try to make it look like there's a lot more going on than I actually drew. I think that's it as far as the coloring goes. I'm going to, um, well, that's, that's an even darker orange that I'm coming in with, almost like a brownish color to add a little bit more contrast to the, to the yellow part of the armor. Um, and then after I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to come in with a, uh, Sharpie poster paint marker. White poster paint. Um, to try to just give that the energy a lot more energy, I guess. Uh, I'm just kind of scribbling and sketching energy lines there, and I'll take that white paint marker also and go on the armor to give it a lot more highlights so that the armor looks really shiny. Um, these white markers are really fun to use, but you can also get a little carried away. And that's it. All done.